night. He just got out of church. Yeah, he's live in person church. So we're going to talk with Tracy Staub, who is currently a judge, and she is running for Court of Appeals. I want to talk to her about that because so many laymen like myself just don't have a clue about the judges or those people that they want to vote for the right person. But how do you go about doing that? You never met them. You never talked to them. You don't know anything about the legal world. So talk to me about the Court of Appeals. What do they do? What do they decide? Oh, that's a good question. Um, the Court of Appeals is the second highest court in the state. Um, there are four levels of court. So we have our, our misdemeanor courts, which is district and municipal courts. I'm a municipal court judge right now, which means uh, we handle all the misdemeanors that are cited within the city of Spokane. We also do all the traffic charges. Um, the infractions. It's a very high volume court. Most people's interaction with the court system happens at that level. Then above that are superior courts. They're called courts of general jurisdiction and they handle the felonies. They handle the per big, you know, personal injury cases. They handle probate and estate and divorces and dependency cases. Um, any real estate transactions, they will, um, they will take those. So there are general jurisdiction. And then above the Superior Court is the Court of Appeals. And it's strictly an appellate court. There are no trials at the Court of Appeals. There are no witnesses. There are no juries at the Court of Appeals. The only thing that court does is take direct review from the Superior Court. So if someone gets a decision in a trial or at a hearing that they do not agree with, and they think the judge made a mistake in the law, they can appeal that decision to the Court of Appeals. Um, and the record from the lower court is sent to the Court of Appeals and the decision at the court is made only on that record. So you don't get a do-over. And then above the Court of Appeals is the Washington State Supreme Court. And they're the highest court in the state. They only accept about 10% of the appeal. So they're really looking for the big, big issues that are going to have big impact. Um, but the majority of the appellate cases are decided at the Court of Appeals. Well, it sounds like that you need to have a little bit of experience in the judicial matters and of sitting in court to actually do that. Now, I couldn't help but notice that your opponent, uh, Marshall Casey, was a uh, uh, an attorney, and he's had experience, of course, as an attorney and in the courtroom. He also was partnered with a controversial figure, Representative Matt Shea, during that time. But has he had any court experience at all? Well, he's had experience. I'm talking as a judge. No, he, he's never been a judge. So okay. he's been an so attorney for about been 10 a, years. And you've been a judge for how long? 11 years. 11 years as a judge, but you were an attorney before that. Right. I was an attorney for about 16 years before I was, uh, became a judge. Okay. So experience counts in positions like these. And it sounds as though your experience uh, is such that you've not only been in the courtroom uh, as an attorney, but you've been there as the judge itself. So that experience really matters. And that's the reason RSC has endorsed you as a judge. So full disclosure here, we have endorsed Tracy Staub uh, for appellate court. Um, I want to talk to why that's important to you. It seems to me that if you're moving from a position uh, where you're actually getting to hear the pros and cons, the opening argument, the closing argument, there's a jury in there and you're over it, why would you want to move up to a place where you're simply looking at documentation? Well, when I was a young attorney, I clerked at the Court of Appeals for about four years. So I worked for a judge, Judge Stephen Brown, um, and clerks do all the grunt work. We're the ones that have to dig through the record. We have to read everything. We have to put together a, a bench memorandum that kind of summarizes the arguments and summarizes the law and then hand it to the judge so that the judge doesn't have as much work to do. 
And I really, really loved that work. Um, appellate work is very unique, and a lot of attorneys and judges don't like it. Um, my husband calls it doing homework for a living. But for me, it's like opening a good book, um, digging through the record and, and kind of going where the evidence and the law leads you. So I really found my passion for appellate work while I was young attorney clerking. And from there, I kind of used that experience to develop uh, a really successful appellate practice after I was a law clerk. Uh, and then I was appointed to the bench as a judge. So going back to the Court of Appeals is full circle for me, going back to the place where I worked as a young attorney. So again, it's experience. Yeah. Yes. You know, and, and because, you know, being um, somewhat opinionated at my age, I, I want to know how you would rule on certain cases. So can I ask you those questions? No, unfortunately. And that's the judicial ethics that prohibits us from suggesting or announcing how we would decide an issue. And, and the reason for that is because I don't have all the information before me. And as a judge, when I make decisions, I need to make decisions based upon the evidence that's before me and apply that evidence to the law that's been written and make my decision in that way. And if I'm prejudging cases before I have all that information, then that's not giving the people who come before me a fair hearing. And ultimately, that's our goal is to give them a fair hearing. I should not have been predisposed to a particular decision. So as frustrating as that may be for voters, it's not something we can do. You'll, you'll hear and understand that as the, um, as the nomination for Judge Barrett starts tomorrow. Um, you know, the, that's right. the, Senate, the Senate Judicial Committee will be asking her a lot of questions and you will find that she will not answer a lot of those questions uh, based upon that ethical duty to not prejudge a particular issue. Well, they're prejudging anyway because they're going to talk about who's conservative and who's liberal. They're going to talk about who's a Democrat and who's a Republican, and it's going to become very partisan. So in Spokane County, in talking about you on the appellate court, can you be partisan? No, we cannot. And, and again, ethically, we're prohibited from being Republican. We're ethically prohibited from being a Democrat or even suggesting that we're partisan politics. Um, you know, when people come before me as a judge, I don't ask them, are you Republican or Democrat? And it doesn't matter. I should judge people and judge situations the exact same regardless of their politics. So from my perspective, if you know my politics, then I have failed as a judge. Well, now, see, I find that really interesting because uh, the Spokane County GOP did endorse you. And that's mm -hmm. wonderful. Um, and they got a call. Members of the GOP board got a call from Representative Shea, uh, very upset because he wanted them to endorse Marshall Casey because Marshall Casey was the conservative judge. So are you telling me or can I interpret that to mean that that was out of line or that that was something that we should not consider? Um, because I think that a lot of people are going to want to consider that in any way. What would your advice be to them? Well, I do think it's inappropriate. Um, and, and number one, I don't know Mr. Shea. I've never met him. So I'm a little surprised that he knows anything about me. Um, I, I understand that he's advocating for his friend and his former coworker. And, and I get that. But again, um, we're not conservative judges. We're not liberal judges, despite all the political rhetoric that's going around. And, you know, you see that even in the Supreme Court justices that are selected, everybody assumes they're going to decide issues a certain way. And it's always a surprise. Even Justice Neil Gorch has recently decided cases that are not, you know, in a conservative manner, which surprised the Republicans. Um, so we're not considered conservative or liberal. Our job as judges is to follow the law that has been written by the legislators and then make sure that that law is within the Constitution. And that's it. Regardless of your personal feelings one way or the other. Exactly. 
Exactly. Okay. So my well, personal can you, be endorsed, person, can you be endorsed by a partisan? Because yes. obviously we endorsed you. Um, I understand that the GOP endorsed you, and I understand that the Democrats endorsed you. So is there an issue there? No, there's not. We can be endorsed by political parties. Um, during a campaign year, we can actually attend their events um, and give people information about our candidacy. If it's not an election year, judges cannot attend partisan political events. Um, so it's only if we are up for election that we can attend those events. But yes, we can be endorsed by political parties. And can you endorse other people? No. <laughs> And and that makes Ooh. it really tough. <laughs> in in fact, oh you know, gosh, um, as, can you talk about things like referendum ninety? No, no. Okay, because that is an issue that may come before the court. And so again, I can't suggest um, if I have a personal preference one way or the other. I can't suggest if that if that referendum is legal or within the constitutional bounds. So it's it's frustrating for voters, and I. I understand but absolutely not well and that's what these questions are really designed is to inform voters because i see a lot of just back and forth on social media about the judges and whether they're this or whether they're that and it seems to me that what you're saying is that a really good judge distinguishes themselves and separates themselves as they should from any of that political banter or any interference in decision making or anything that might in any way sway their judgment. The very thing that we get upset is, is legislating from the bench. And what you're saying is, if you can't separate yourself from that, then you don't need to be running for that office. Yes, I, I absolutely agree. Um, there will be issues that will come before me as a judge, and I may not agree with the legislation, um, but that's not my job. If, if the legislation is authorized, if it's valid within the Constitution, then my job is to apply it regardless of my agreement or disagreement with it. You know, I'm so distracted by that cup in your hand, I just know you're going to pour water on yourself. <laughs> Sorry. I'm sorry. Because <laughs> you talk with your hands and now cup is flying around. Yeah. <laughs> sorry about that, Tracy. That's okay. <laughs> well, let's keep on that same line of discussion. I can edit that out. Trust okay. me. Okay. Um, what actually distinguishes you then from your opponent? Uh, well, um, you know, my experience and my qualifications distinguish me. Um, if you put a side by side, uh, you know, there's just, there's the, the, the choice and the distinction is obvious. Um, I have 27 years of experience and, and he has 10. I was an attorney for 16 years and he's been an attorney for 10. Uh, I have 11 years of experience as a judge and he has none. Um, I, I, as an attorney and a law clerk, I've worked on hundreds of appeals. Uh, and he's worked on 11. Um, I have very significant criminal experience. And the reason that's important is because more than 60% of the cases at the Court of Appeals are criminal cases. So I have a lot of criminal experience and he has little to any that I know of. Um, so again, side by side, the comparisons and the qualifications, it, it really is uh, an easy decision. Well, what are your accomplishments then? As a municipal court judge, what have you been able to accomplish uh, in that seat? We've done a lot in the 11 years we've been there, and we're really considered a model court throughout the state. One of my biggest accomplishments has been the creation and operation of a DUI therapeutic court. So um, this is a court that was created three years ago, and it's um, brings in people who are struggling with substance use disorder, who've had multiple driving under the influence charges, um, and we take a very hands-on approach. It's very intensive supervision. They are in treatment three times a week. They're in self-help twice a week. They have an alcohol monitoring device on their ankle. They have to provide random U UA tests eight times a month. 
Um, they have to get a mental health evaluation. They have to go through uh, cognitive behavioral therapy. They have to do significant community service. Um, so it's not the easy way out. But in the three years that we've been in operation, we have not had one person uh, recommit or get charged with a new driving under the influence charge. Really? That yes. is an amazing record, Judge Stubb. That yes. is amazing. And these are people with four, five, six DUIs on their record. So we are wow. very, very proud. We're very proud of our participants. It's not easy. Um, but we're following the evidence and it's working. That is amazing. I know I talked to Tim Fitzgerald at one point, who is, by the way, the Spokane County clerk, and he was telling us about Veterans Court and some of the amazing successes there. So it sounds like that with you in office and with, you know, a few of our other office holders that we're actually serving the people of the community in a way that is looked up to just as our sheriff's department is looked up to by all of those surrounding us. And I think that that's wonderful simply because we need good news right now. We need to know that the people we've elected are in these positions. They are serving the community and they are servants of the people. So thank you for that. Just yes. uh, from me to you. Thanks a ton. Now that brings me to judicial ratings. Can you explain what that is and uh, if you have been rated and what those ratings are? Sure. Uh, judicial ratings, so there, within the state of Washington, there are multiple independent bar associations. And a lot of them take on the task of rating judicial candidates. And these are not endorsements. These are attorneys and retired judges who volunteer their time to really dig into a candidate's experience and background and temperament, knowledge of the law, integrity, reputation, and give that person a rating. And so the, the application process is, is very intense. Um, I think my application was 13 pages long and it talks about all the cases that I've tried as an attorney or a judge and the attorneys that have appeared before me and opposing counsel when I was an attorney. Um, they dig through a writing sample to see if you can write correctly. They call multiple, multiple references. And these are not just the references you list, but, you know, people that know you. And then they sit down and they do a, a group interview um, and they pepper you with questions and you need to be able to answer those questions. So it's a very intensive pro process. Uh, it's something that... An a candidate can volunteer for with the understanding that um, <clears throat> if you're not qualified, they're going to rate you as either being not qualified or just qualified. And then that rating is out there and there's really nothing you can do about it. So it's risky. <laughs> um, I went through the process at the beginning of this year when I knew I was going to be uh, running for this position and I was rated by seven different bar associations. Um, four of them rated me exceptionally well qualified, which is the highest rating you can get. And three of them rated me well qualified. Uh, these include like the Washington State Veterans Bar Association uh, and the Lauren Miller Bar Association, the Joint Asian Bar Association and the Latino Bar Association all rated me exceptionally well qualified. Wow, Tracy, that's, that's pretty awesome. Do you happen to know if your opponent has been rated? No, he suggested in another forum that he chose not to go through that process. Hmm. Okay. Do you think that we should be electing judges or do you think that they should be appointed? Well, there's, there's pros and cons to both method, methods. Um, as, as you and I have discussed during this interview, electing judges is hard because we're nonpartisan and we cannot give opinions on how we're going to decide issues. And that leaves voters with less information than they would like. So um, it's difficult for voters to elect judges. That's the difficulty of it. The, the, the pro to electing judges is it holds us accountable to the people, which I think we need to be. It's always in the back of my mind that I am accountable to the voters. And if I mess this up, I'm going to have to answer for it. Um, 
Appointing judges is they're usually vetted really well. And in theory, they're selected based on their qualifications and experience. Unfortunately, sometimes politics enters into that picture. And so there's pros and cons to appointment. Even if they are appointed, they are then subject to election. Uh, so ultimately, they will be accountable to the voters. There's different states that have kind of blended these two processes, and um, there are certain panels uh, that will kind of like these bar associations that will rate candidates and maybe select three of the top candidates and present those to the governor who can then select from among those three candidates. And that keeps the process from becoming so political and ensures that we get qualified candidates on the bench. Um, but I don't have a, a, I don't have a magic wand. I don't have a, you know, magic mirror. I, there's pros and cons to each process. Um, but this is an election. So this year I'm accountable again. Well, okay. So when you're on the appellate court, because you are going to get elected in my opinion. Um, but when you're on the appellate court, is that a federal or a state court? This is a state court. So well, how are they um, different? Federal court judges are appointed for life. Uh, so except for bankruptcy judges. So when um, and you, it's the president who appoints them and then the Senate Judiciary Committee uh, verifies that. So federal judges are never elected. And once they're appointed, they're there for life. So is that what we're talking about when we hear President Trump talking about filling the Obama left something like 300 vacancies and he has filled them? Those are lifetime appointments. Yes, exactly. Wow, that is interesting. Do you have any, um, let's say, future aspirations? <laughs> no. To be a federal? I do not. <laughs> right I, now you're just I looking will. at a pellet court. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you tell me a little bit about your judicial philosophy and, and how, you, uh, how you work when you're on the bench? Sure. Um, you know, I think it's really important that people come before me are heard or feel like they, they have been heard. They may disagree with my decision, but they need to know that I considered what they're saying and their position, that I read the law that I really gave their case some time and attention. That's very important for the people who come into court, whether it's at the trial court level or at the appellate court level. So it's important for me to be well prepared. It's important for me to stay uh, up to date on what the current law is. Um, I'm also, I also try very hard to be kind understanding that everybody who comes before the court is having a tough day or has unique circumstances. I try to be courageous because some of the decisions we have to make may not be as popular as others are. And so that takes some courage to reach an unpopular decision. And um, I try and remember my place in all of this. Uh, I, as a judge, am a servant of the law and of the people that it protects. So my job as a judge is to respect the three branches of government, to not legislate from the bench, and to faithfully uphold the Constitution. So um, that's where I come from. I love that. Can we talk about you personally just for a little bit? Sure. Okay, I know that you're married. I know that you have children. Mm -hmm. um, when I asked you to do this interview, you were in the barn uh, cleaning stalls and such. Is that kind of how you get your, uh, your downtime, that time to get away? And um, it sounds like an idyllic life. Um, <laughs> can you tell me a little bit about your community service and what you do outside and about your home life? And um, I, I just was intrigued that you have such an idyllic way of getting away from because I know this job has to be stressful and I know it some nights you probably don't sleep wondering about whether your decision is going to affect someone or not is that kind of how you unwind and how you get some of that energy out yes absolutely 
I have a barn full of animals. I have pygmy goats and I have horses and I have chickens and I have dogs and cats. Um, and the thing about animals is they don't take a vacation. So every night, rain, shine, sleet, minus 20 degree weather, I have to put on my barn clothes and go out into the barn and do physical manual labor. And it is really my sanctuary. Um, you know, being out there, moving hay bales around, cleaning stalls, fencing, all of that is really my way to unwind. And so it's really important for me. I grew up in a small town. I grew up with animals my whole life. I, I kind of left that for a little while when I was a young parent, but then had the opportunity to come back to it and have heavy animals. So it's really important to me. The other important part to me is our faith. Um, my husband and I have been members of Life Center Church for 19 years now. <clears throat> And I'm on my second term as a board member. In fact, I just got my, my, board, ex, my board term extended. <laughs> um, but we've, we've been there for quite a while. My husband is on the board of a nonprofit called Spring of Hope, which is a nonprofit that brings clean water and uh, economic vitality to an area in Kenya called Adiedo. And he's had several mission trips over to Kenya to bring clean water. It's, it's really a, a great thing. So with our church, we do a lot of community service, mentoring at-risk youth, you know, food drives, um, a lot of the service that the church provides. Wow. You know, it just the more I talk to you, the more I know that y your life is one of service. And again, Tracy, I want to thank you for that and for coming on here this morning and letting me talk to you and ask you personal questions and dig a little bit because people need to get to know who you are and I'm going to encourage everyone to vote. So your ballots are out. It's time to vote. Tracy, what's your website? Uh, it's judgestaub.com and Staub is spelled with two A's and one B. I always tell people it's like the car with a T, and they, they think about it for a minute, and they go, oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, and if you go to the Republicans of Spokane County website, which is republicansofspokane.com, and you click on Tracy's picture, that'll take you straight to her website. In about two days, uh, if I can get all of my equipment to work correctly, we will be posting a video with Tracy, this video, and distributing it throughout the county. It'll be on our Facebook page. And you are welcome to share that with as many people as you possibly can. And remember that the importance of your voting is everything to the future of our children. So thank you so much, Tracy. We'll talk to you later. Thank you.
That is amazing. I know I talked to Tim Fitzgerald at one point, who is, by the way, the Spokane County clerk, and he was telling us about Veterans Court and some of the amazing successes there. So it sounds like that with you in office and with, you know, a few of our other office holders that we're actually serving the people of the community in a way that is looked up to just as our sheriff's department is looked up to by all of those surrounding us. And I think that that's wonderful simply because we need good news right now. We need to know that the people we've elected are in these positions. They are serving the 